There's a similar problem with Malta that there is for all of the European countries in the sense that you're your own economy, you're the finance minister, but you also have to be European in outlook and you can't advocate very much for trade to go to Malta or not. But you must have some very strong feelings about whether the European Union keeps its trade ties with the likes of the United States. Yes, it is a concern. Um, of course, the different countries are at different stages of the um, positive outlook. Which overall, it is still positive with uh, growth um, still on in, in most countries, something we haven't seen for quite a number of years, and the fact that unemployment is still falling. But obviously um, looming behind all this is, uh, is the uh, trade issues, um, which we are concerned with, of course. It is a concern because we've seen throughout history that um, it matters a lot uh, for global trade, for European trade, I mean for small countries who have an open economy, in other words, they're relying on trade, it is a concern. Not directly, but indirectly it will, um, could, could lead to trade wars, which nobody wants, really. Well, of course, there's the waiver on tariffs on aluminum and steel, but what if the president, our president, President Donald Trump, decides not to extend those waivers? Yes, but, you know, I mean, you can start with uh, one object and the other, but the point is you are going to expect a, re a retaliation, a reaction. And the European has uh, shown in un no uncertain terms that it intends, in fact, it chose, uh, you know, the list which hurts more, bourbon, whiskey, Levi's, and so on, so on and so yeah. forth. But it's, it's not the detail which matters. The fact is the concept. And that's why we are, have more global issues to go forward and grow and, you know, keep financial stability. We are sort of, I, I mean, I don't call them games, but we are indeed uh, playing games um, because they are retali retaliatory and um, history has shown that each country in turn would, would increase, barriers all over, trade will fall, unemployment will, will increase. So I'm not saying that this will happen, but the risk is there and if we play with that, uh, I think the, what, what one would be expecting is not that um, positive at all. Finance Minister should, could, will the EU offer concessions to gain an exemption from these Trump tariffs? Well, that's a, a difficult decision for the EU to take because it could go one way and say, look, I'm fine, so, you know, uh, the rest can look after itself. Fine, yes, very, very short term, and um, it will save us and give us some, some, some uh, space. But that is not, I think, what we're really after. I think because the other option is to go for the WTO, to, um, WTO rules rather than break them, um, but respect them. So that's another route. It's, it's a big decision for the EU to take. And I wish, I mean, personally, I would go for the WTO. Getting exemption, you know, for region because we are allies is really skirting the real issue. The real issue is that can you, you know, have a declining industry prep, prep it up um, in, the, in the long term or permanently just with tariffs? And the answer, history has economic history has shown the answer is no. So we've built up the WTO. Let's respect its rules. Let's uh, abide by them. If we have issues, we'll go to that organization. If it's not strong enough, we'll strengthen it and so on. But we need to... Um, uh, you know, go through multilateral approach rather than a bilateral approach. Mm -hmm. Finance Minister, the other area of contention is digital taxation. It's been proposed by the EC that revenues of digital, you know, big tech giants could be taxed to the tune of 3%. Uh, it, it seemed to have been met with a lukewarm response from EU leaders at the last summit. Is this the sort of measure that needs to be applied globally, not just at a local level? And th there is a parallel here as well, because as far as the international taxation, the corporate taxation, we always look, for, look up to the international organization, which has been there studying, and uh, lately with BAP's report, which is a quite, quite comprehensive report about uh, reducing um, tax avoidance and profit shifting and so on, it, which is the OECD. Now, that is the way to go. Now, for a 
to go for a quick fix, as in fact is being called, it is just that, a quick fix. Um, who would want a quick fix um, for and ignoring the US, if not, you know, uh, worsening the situation of, of, of good relationship there, uh, ignoring China and go for a quick fix on this digital tax. So Malta, like uh, quite a number, of, a growing number of, 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 of ministers in, in, the, mm -hmm. in the council, are in, in favor for a more long-term approach um, using the, the OECD. Um, now, the answer of the big countries like France and so on say, you know, it will take time. But, you know, to go for a quick fix and all the, and, 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 that, and in this yes. particular case, without really wanting, you're going to hit American companies. Um, it not would not look good in the current uh, tiff between EU and the US. The European Commission says Malta is going to grow 5.6% this year, more than double some of the other European countries. In fact, real GDP growth might be 7.2%. Okay. How are you doing it? And would you then take in more migrants, for example, as a, as a, you know, a, as a sort of a give back, seeing as you can obviously afford to do that? If I start from the, from, from the end, we need them. In other words, well, all people are migrants coming from outside, whether, whether irregular, we call them irregular from, from North Africa, but also from Europe. Those are regular ones um, because they have every right to come in, in Malta. And Malta can't grow at, that, at those rates without relying on, on input. And it, otherwise, the labor market would have heated up already, it would have had wage inflation, while in fact, at the moment, inflation is only 1.2% which shows that there is a, a high elasticity of labor coming from Europe and also outside, which has helped the economy grow. The economy grew because we undertook reforms. We, we had the lowest uh, female participation in Europe. We had to have tax breaks. We provided uh, free childcare centers and managed to get the participation. And, um, and other supply issues. We lowered income tax and shifted it to consumption taxes mm -hmm. and thereby removed the bur you know, reduced the burden on work, making work pay. And slowly, slowly, we started attracting investment. Many different ways to skin a cat, as they say. Well, Minister, yes, but Malta you. is attractive for now on, on this uh, digital. So um, being attractive, it, it counts a lot.